It's me, it's you. We together now. Look at her, strongly unified. But I walk in a life, no shame. Let's talk it out. It's me, it's you. We together now. Look at her, strongly unified. But I walk in a life, no shame. Let's talk it out. everyone and welcome back to let's talk it out again i have so enjoyed these segments i've enjoyed all of our guests that have come because they have brought something unique to the table concerning them and their uh experience with god and today is no different today we have miss jackie b with yes, us thank, thank you. you so much for joining me here today thank i appreciate i appreciate your accepting the invitation and um uh, of course, we're going to begin by talking about um, how your life, not from the very beginning, but how your life has uh, come about and how it's evolved and how God has helped you through different areas. And then we'll get to, quote unquote, the finale of why you're here. But let's just introduce you. You are married. Is that correct? I am. Yes, I'm married to Jeffrey B. Mm -hmm. um, we've been married 17 years now. Congratulations. Thank that you. is a feat in these days, yes. but congratulations. Oh, and I just love the smile when you said, oh, I've been married. <laughs> that, is, that is so good. That means that you are happy. Yes. But before marriage, um, it's my understanding that you were in the military. Yes. Uh, for how long? I spent 10 years in the Army um, as a medic, a okay. medical assistant. Okay. Um, and then I got out and moved here to be with um, my husband, Jeffrey. Oh, okay. Um, we had already known each other, though. We grew up together, Head Start, elementary school, high school. Um, our parents know each other. Our families know each other. So um, I, my mom worked with his dad. So we oh, had wow. a long history together. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that is long yes. history. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying that you believe it was meant to be? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It was definitely meant to be. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you were in the military for 10 years. Um, were you married during that 10 years to Jeffrey? Um, no, I was married, but I wasn't married to Jeffrey. OK. Um, I had a short marriage while I was in the military. Um, three years. Um, I married my youngest daughter's dad. Um, we were together for three years. And um, after that, is when um, but Jeffrey and I dated prior to that, okay. prior to me entering the military. And the military kind of separated us. It wasn't, you know, a breakup or a bad breakup. It was just the distance that kind of separated us. Oh, okay. um, and so after I was divorced, um, Jeffrey and I reconnected. Okay, okay, that's <laughs> In an good. uncommon way. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, in an uncommon way. And you said that you had a daughter. How many children do you have? I have three. Oh, okay. Three okay. children. All right, that's that's pretty cool. Three yeah, children. I had three children. I um I actually grew up with my kids as well. Um, I had my first when I was sixteen. Oh, okay. Um, I had my son when I was sixteen, and two years later I had a daughter. Um, and then there's a five year gap between the girls. Oh, okay. So it's two two girls and one boy. Oh, okay. All right, two girls and one boy. Yes. Oh, okay. So you were in the army, and then when you um left the military, what did you do at that time? Um, I left the military because Jeffrey and I were, we start, we reconnected, we started dating again, and um, Jeffrey was really serious, he wanted to be married, okay. and so, um, but he didn't want an army wife, okay. so um, he wanted to be with his wife, and so um, I agreed that I would get out of the military, because I was at a fork in the road, I was at 10 years, do you stay in or do you get out, and so um, I decided to um, get out <clears throat> and move here, and um, I moved here in March, in July we were married. It's kind of funny because when I got here, I was coming up with reasons why we shouldn't. Oh, let's put it off. Let's wait until this time, that time. But um, yeah, Mr. Mr. B was ready. Oh, he was ready. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we we just, I mean, we just gonna you kind of put him through a test, didn't you? I did. Test him. I mean, I uh, we do know that Pastor Poe always said you need to investigate before you invest, but mm -hmm. I. I, I think you did a, maybe a little bit more than... <laughs> I did. I did. So um, I went on a deployment. Jeffrey and I were communicating, and I left to go on deployment. And um, Jeffrey was in a relationship, and um, I told him, you know, we'll connect when I return. And so um, when I got back, while I was away, um, I got saved. Um, I changed my life around, started living for Christ. 
And so um, Jeffrey reached out to my cousin while he was home and told her, you know, that I'm in town. Tell Jackie, I hope, you know, the offer's on the table. I'm here, you know. And so I reached out to him. And we talked about that a statement I made to him. And I shared with him that, you know, I'm saved now. I'm living my life for Christ and I'm not into the things I was into before. You know, I'm not into the club and, you know, that type of deal. And he said, okay, I can respect that, but I, I can still be your husband. We can still, I'm like, okay. Um, and so he told me that he was in a situation and to give him some days, 30 days to get out of it. And 30 days later, I received a phone call. He was ready, you know, to, for us to um, reconvene, okay. if you will. And so um, at that point, I started making excuses why we can't, you know, well, I'm saved and I don't want to bring anybody else over my kids and, you know, being protective of the kids. And um, I was coming up with different reasons why we couldn't. And so um, he was very persistent. And um, so how much money you make? And he told me, I was like, no, you can't be making that much money. So send me your pay stub. Oh, and he did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you were surprised at how high it was or how low it was? How high it was. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and so he sent me a pay stub, showed me his pay stub. I'm like, oh, okay. And so I said, well, if I'm coming there, then you have to rent a four bedroom apartment. So I'm thinking, I'm going to find a four bedroom apartment. I don't know where this man found a four bedroom apartment, but he found a four bedroom apartment in the Brandon area, I think it was. It's more like three bedrooms, but there was a great room. And so um, at that point, I said, well, no, I want to be in a house. I'm not used to living in an apartment, so you have to rent a house. And so he found a four-bedroom house to rent. And then I said, well, no, I want to buy a house. You should buy a house. I need you to buy a house. And he said, okay. And I think at that point, he had just given up. Like, if I buy, find a house and say I'm going to buy this house, then she's going to come up with something else. He did start to show me different houses. And, you know, I was like, oh, well, no, not that one. I was having reasons for not this one not maybe that one well Jackie why do you think you were doing this I was just I wanted to preserve my Christianity I was oh, okay. a baby in Christ and okay. I wanted to stay that babe in Christ I didn't want to do anything that would pull me away from the life I was trying to live oh okay and okay. I just felt like I knew our history mm -hmm. you know we were clubbers and you know that so I just didn't want to go back into that lifestyle okay. Oh, okay. and so um I'll never forget Valentine's Day. I didn't hear from him all day. So I'm thinking, oh, it's over. I'm done. This is it. It's over. And I fell asleep and probably around 2 o'clock in the morning. So now it's February 15th. Um, he calls my cell phone. I'm thinking, why is he calling me this time of night? So you've been out all night and now you want to call. And when I answered the phone, he said, so you're just going to leave your man standing out in the cold? Because it was cold in Columbus, Georgia. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, I'm downstairs at the door. And so when I opened the door, he just handed me the stack of papers. Here's your house. Oh, wow. Much. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, like, okay, so I have to move to Tampa now. You know, so, um, and I did. I, you know, moved to Tampa. And then it was a quest to find a church home. And so I was really he was, Jeffrey was very diligent. You know, we went from this church to that church. I think we tried about four or five churches before we found Revealing Truth. Um, he was working with a member here, and she had been inviting him and inviting him. And so one Sunday we got up, we had decided we're not going to bring the kids with us. We're just going to go find a church to attend. And so we got up and we were driving. He said, well, let me go. This is Armenia. I remember Julie saying her church was on Armenia. Let's just go down here. And so we turned on Armenia off of 275, and as we got here, we saw the police cars out. At that point, we used to have police cars outside. And as we were pulling up into the parking lot, there was Julie. She had no idea we were coming. She was in the parking lot. We were like, oh, wow, there she is. But my husband said, oh, there she is. And so we came in, and we just loved it. And we've been here ever since. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Uh, but after you got out of the military, what did you do as far as career was concerned? So I was kind of undecided on what I wanted to do. Um, I would want, really wanted to be a social worker, but that was going to require a lot of time for the income I kind of built my lifestyle around. And so at least that's what I was thinking. And so um, I was kind of undecided and Jeffrey encouraged me, well, why don't you go to nursing school? I know this really good nursing school, you know, that you should go to. And he actually had, you know, he knew about the school and got me all the information. And from there, I decided to go to nursing school, did really well. 
um, for me to not be into it, I did really well <laughs> in school. Actually, I graduated top of the class. I, um, but as a nurse, after I started working as a nurse, and I've done it all from teaching, nursing, I've worked in the ICU, I've worked outpatient, inpatient, rehab wow. setting. I've done a lot. I just kind of bounced around because I just, it wasn't satisfying. Okay. Okay. I felt there was something missing. But I found myself gravitating to the social work piece of nursing, where you're connecting the dots for the patients. And so, actually, just to go back, um, we were living in a parish area when we moved here. It's a poor area of Tampa. And all the kids would come to our house. And I was standing out looking out the door one day, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you are to have a house for kids that can't live home with their families. And as the Holy Spirit was dropping this in my spirit, my husband walked behind me, and I told him what the Holy Spirit had just spoken to me. And so um, he was in agreement. Oh, that sounds good. Well, we, how can we do this? And so we started brainstorming immediately because, again, we were babies in Christ and we were trying to do everything right away. Everything God shares with us, let's do it. And so um, we just kind of, I was hitting a brick wall because I knew nothing about a foster care system. I knew nothing about where am I going to find these kids? Do I just go up and down the street and just invite the kids to come to my home? Like, how am I going to get the kids? And so, um, it was so amazing how God began to work that um, because he gave me the name of the business. So when he gave me the name of the business, I'm thinking, what am I going to do with a business name? <laughs> what am I gonna well, do let with me this? ask you, how long, were you how, were, how long were you doing nursing before you, um, well, let's say, got the vision from God or the idea from God concerning this? How long were you in nursing, in the nursing well, field? Actually, I was finishing up nursing school, so I was just starting my nursing career um, as an LPN. So it was toward the end of school, the beginning of the career, is when God spoke to me. Oh, okay. Okay, so, uh, so you got the, um, the idea from God, and you all brainstormed. How long was it after that that you um, made a decision that I'm going to move forward on this. How 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 long did it take oh, you? Goodness. Was it a lot of <laughs> was it a lot of testing like you did your husband? Yes. Or <laughs> it was definitely a lot of time. So that was 2004. I didn't actually act on it until the first action I took was in 2014. Oh okay. Concerning what God had dropped in my spirit. And so um, I had the name and um I can't remember how I got the idea to go out on Florida Sunbeers to see if that name was even being used by anyone else. And you're going to share that name with us? Yes, that name is Grace for Hope. And so what God spoke to me concerning the hope is that we were to provide hope for the youth. And so God started revealing to me other entities of the business and other entities and other avenues he wanted me to um, approach concerning the youth. And so as he was sharing these different avenues, he was dropping more names. So I'm like, wait a minute. I thought it's Grace for Hope. Or, and then there was Priscilla's Hope. And I'm thinking, what is all of this? And so each entity, you know, helping pregnant youth and helping um, him and traffic girls, each one had a different name that included hope. And so I would sit home in the middle of the night and, just jot down things what God, God would say to me because he would always speak to me in the middle of the night, in the still of the night, um, whether it's in my dream or if it's I'm just sitting upstairs in my office and he's just speaking to me and I'm just jotting things down. He would um, always speak to me concerning exactly what he wanted me to do. And I was kind of confused. Okay, you're telling me to do this, but then there's this. Like, how is all this going to work? What does this look like? How am I going to do all of this? And so I had a friend that um, I knew she worked with um, the Department of Children and Family Services, but I just didn't know exactly what she did. So I figured, well, maybe she knows some children I could help out, you know, because in 2014, I'm ready to get going. You know, I'm well established in my nursing career. You know, I've kind of climbed the ranks and I did that pretty quickly. Um, so let, let me just tap into what God has been calling me to do. Um, and was so, it was it a challenge though concerning your your job and your income because you know you were accustomed to a certain yes, lifestyle was, and yes. so you had to I'm sure that had to cross your mind yes and so the more God 
began to impress upon me, it's time to do what I've called you to do. The more I started calling myself a modern day Jonah because I started backpedaling like, okay, wait a minute. Like you're taking me too fast, God. You want me to do what? And I got, this is full time. You know, and I finally made it to this point in my career where I was making a certain amount. And, you know, as a kid, those figures, you know, once I hit those figures, I'm set, you know. And so surely you don't want me to leave these figures because if I leave this, then I'm leaving this lifestyle that I, I quote unquote, had created. And so I was thinking, um, I can remember telling my colleague one day she came in to talk to me and we were talking about growth and moving up within the VA system. And I said, you know, I've hit it. I've hit big with this position. And I'm going to stay right here and just be fat, dumb, and happy. You know, we kind of <laughs> laugh. You know, we chuckled about that. And she said, Jackie, there's a lot more for you. I just see so much more, you know. And so um, after she said that, it was like, okay. And then God started, you know. Okay, Jackie, it's time to move. It's time. I need you to start doing this. And so I started to inquire more and more about these youth that I'm supposed to be taking care of. And so I spoke to my girlfriend, the one that was working, I thought was working at DCF. Um, and she said, you know, I don't work for DCF. You don't know what I do? And I'm thinking, no, why would I know? <laughs> Hang out, you don't know? No, she said, well, I know you're a nurse. Oh, okay. And so she told me what she did. And I told her, I said, well, I'm interested in having a house for kids. And she said, oh, you want a group home? I said, yeah, 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 group home. Said, well, okay, if that's what you say it is, that's what it is. And so um, I said, yeah, I said, and the name of it is Grace for Hope. Oh, you already have the group home. I said, no, that's just the name God told me. Really? Like She was just kind of shocked. I said, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. And so she said, I'll, I'll put you in contact with some people that can help you. And so the very next day, she was quick. The very next day, I started getting emails <laughs> from different individuals um, on pursuing a group home. And so that kind of now I'm startled, like, OK, what do I do? And so I said, OK, guy, you got to walk me through this. And I started going to classes because I was thinking, OK, this will be something I do on the weekends because I have to fund it. I right. have to be able to take care of these children. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the state, you know, provides for their own, you know, for the children. And so I was thinking, how am I going to do this plus work? I can't leave my job. And so um, I began working on a business plan. I began to work on a budget, you know, how many kids can I afford to take care of? So I was doing all these things, mind you, behind the scenes and not including my husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know what made me exclude him. And so when I did want to bring him in, I started going to classes and I invited him to the classes. And I can remember him telling me one day, no, I'm not going. I just don't feel like going. And so after the class, I was so excited, on fire. I'm getting ready to do this thing. And so I called him. I said, Jeffrey, we're ready. You know, I said, they're going to come out and talk to us. And you know, we talked today. So what was the meeting about? I said, well, they were just telling me about bringing the kids to my home and spending time. And he said, whoa, 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 wait. What are you talking about? I was about, about to say your home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking, okay, Jackie, our kids are grown and almost grown. We have one that's getting ready to leave home. And you want to start over? No. Pastor Deborah, now, mind you, it had taken me a while to start actually walking this thing out. That took the wind out of me. I literally pulled over on 275 and was bawling. Oh. At this point, I'm thinking, this man is holding me back from doing what God has called me to do. <laughs> so clearly, God, you got to fix him. And so... That is funny. You got to fix him. him. Yes, I, you got to fix him. And so it, I'm just going to be transparent. Okay. I didn't speak to him after that for about a week. We didn't talk. <laughs> I literally did not talk to him. I was so upset um, because I felt like I was starting to do what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was still a little bit of timidness in me. I'm um, thinking, mm, am I, you know, how much of this, how much of myself am I going to give? And so um, I remember my mom, who wasn't saved at the time, I remember her telling me, just pray. God will fix it. I think that was all she knew to say. Right. Just pray. God will fix it. And so I kind of put things on the back burner, but I continued to um, solidify the business plan and just kind of perfect it. And I continued to hear what God was saying. 
And then God said, you're going to have to leave your job. I think that's when you came to see me. Yes, because <laughs> I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, no, God, I don't think that's what you want me to do. Because I'm thinking, how am I going to live? Like, we have this house and we have, you know, these other things. Like, I, my income contributes to this. Like, right. what are we going to do? Right. And so I remember um, I was talking to Pastor Latasha one night on the phone and I was telling her, I said, you know, I'm just, and she was telling me, Jackie, there's something about you. Like you, you have something in you. And I said, yeah, I know. And I know exactly what it is. And I said, but it'll never come out. And she said, what do you mean it'll never come out? I said, I am the modern day Jonah. I am in the belly of the whale and I won't let him spit me out. I'm staying here. Oh, and wow. yes. And she goes, no. Mm -mm. And I told her, I said, I'm accustomed to a certain lifestyle and I don't want to give it up. And she said, Jackie, God designed you. He knows what you like. He gave you desires. He's going to take care of you, you know. And so then that was not it. That wasn't enough. I got to go talk to Pastor Deb. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a dream. It was after I had a dream. Um, I dreamed that I was in paradise. And I was calling all of these people in paradise. I'm like, come in. The water's pretty. And rainbows and beautiful snow-capped mountains and it was just so unbelievable and no one would come in with me there was only myself my husband and a couple others and this was when the iphone 10 had just come out i think it was and i said well at least take pictures and use my new iphone 10 to take the pictures you know <laughs> because i wanted them to take part in this paradise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so at that moment i got up the next morning and i was you know, talking to God, okay, God, what, what, did, what did that dream mean? And he said, I have a place for you. Everyone is not going to go with you, but you have to stay the course. You have to go. And I'm like, no, that means I have to leave the VA. I don't know about that. And so I was talking to my husband about it. He said, you need to go talk to Pastor. Go talk to Pastor Deborah. And that's when I made the appointment to come and speak to you. And even I think back, when I came, it was so vague. There was this thing I need to do. I really don't want to leave. What do you think, Pastor Deborah? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a lot of detail. <laughs> and so um, at that moment, um, I, I didn't share it with you, but you really fine-tuned some things for me. Um, I still had, in my mind, I was going to be the old lady that lived in a shoe. You know, I got to bring all these kids to my home. And you just kind of fine tune that. You know, you were like, well, Jackie, it doesn't mean you have to bring them all to your house. You know, like, oh, goodness. Okay. All right. So then I still struggled with that financial piece. How do I leave this job? And so God continued to speak to me. And there was a moment when he stopped. You know, he would show me things, you know, he would always come to me in my dreams and share scripture with me. And um, there was one night I can remember the Holy Spirit. I could hear the Holy Spirit. I could hear God, an audible voice. And I'm thinking, oh, whoa. And so then there was a scripture God wanted me to hold on to. But I didn't hear the scripture. I missed that because I was in awe of everything else he was saying. And so when I got up, I was sitting on the side of the bed. I'm like, God, what was it? Give me the scripture. Give it to me. Give it to me. And he wouldn't. And I'm thinking, why would you do me like this? And so later that day, or maybe a couple of days later, I'm not really sure of the time or exact timeline, but I was driving to one of the clinics that I was servicing. I had staff out in Lakeland. I was driving out there. And I just began to bawl because I felt the vision God had placed inside of me to care for all of these kids. And I was hearing Pastor... So many, um, I've been hearing him talk about all the youth he wanted to reach, and I'm thinking, there are a lot of children out there. And then I started doing research, how many children were in foster care, more than 4,000 right here in this area. I'm thinking, what am I going to do with all of this? And I'm thinking, God, you dropped all of this in my lap. What am I going to do? I'm only one person. I don't have anybody helping me. My husband ain't trying to do this. You know, he is at work. He is happy with what he's doing. And I'm thinking, I can't handle it, so I'm going to stay here, you know. And I'm, I'm, I was crying so hard, Pastor Deborah. I could barely drive. And I can, I can remember feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, um, just comforting me. 
you know, when you're crying, you're sobbing and someone just grabs you and you feel just at rest, at ease at that moment. And that's how I felt. Um, God just grabbed me and he just held me in that moment. And so um, I got myself together, checked out the staff. And that night I got home and the Holy Spirit led me up to my office and I went in my room and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, God, you never gave me that scripture. What was it? And the Holy Spirit said, look up. And I'm thinking, the Holy Spirit said, look up. And I looked up and there was a scripture on my wall. I actually had it on the wall. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because during that moment when I was sobbing and crying out to God, I was like, I can't do this. I cannot do it. I'm just one person. And he reminded me that scripture from Philippians. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that gave me my second win. That's good. That's good. That's good. And um, just listening at you talk, a lot of times we do struggle with some of the things that God tells us to do because we think we have to do it in our own yes. strength. We think we have to have all of it together. We think we got to have all the resources. We got to have all the ideas. We got to have all the people. But then it's not by faith if you have it all. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's not absolutely. by faith. If you, and the things that God tells us to do, um, they are things that he wants us to lean on him for and uh, have faith, not faith to make him do it, yes. but faith to lean on him that he will help us through whatever he's asking us to do. He'll fund it. He'll do, he'll do whatever mm -hmm. is necessary. And I'm hearing you talk about um, more than anything, your relationship yes. with God, mm -hmm. how you became transparent with him yes. and understanding sometimes we blow things up all out of proportion yes. in the fact that I heard there were 4,000 kids, 4,000 kids are supposed to come into your exactly. house and that's us doing things on our own, mm -hmm. but it may be just God letting us be aware that it's necessary and you need to do your part. Yes, you don't absolutely. have to do everything, but do do your part. Do the yes. part that I'm calling you mm -hmm. to do. So I think that's really great that in doing all of this, your relationship is what kept you intact because God kept speaking to you. And of course, you knew his voice. Yes. You knew when he was talking mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you even knew kind of to step back a little bit when your husband was not in agreement, although you yes. may have been mad. Mm hmm concerning mm -hmm. yes. it and we do that sometimes because uh sometimes god want us to pull back just a little bit and yes. give us a, a little wait time because he wants to show us something else yes. or strengthen us in other areas and we can get mad at other people that we think oppose uh -huh. what it is yes. <laughs> what it is we Absolutely. like i'm just Absolutely. emphatic god told me to yes. do this and you should be on board <laughs> and you should right and you should be on board yes. but then he knew you had a challenge with the money yes and if mm -hmm. he if he'd have just said, go ahead and do it, you'd have done it your own Absolutely. way. Absolutely. But please continue on. <laughs> yes, yes. And so you say, um, I'm going to go back to my husband being on board. Um, so after I would spend long nights in my office, three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to bed. You know, I'm up working on these different I'm reading other proposals and reading other business plans and just making sure that I was dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. And so. Um, I got up one morning and my husband was laying in bed because he had the option to work from home or go into his office. And so um, I was not a morning person. And so I would get jealous whenever <laughs> he worked from home. And so this particular morning I was tired, had been up to three in the morning and I'm right back up, you know, to go to work. And so I looked at him and he was, you know, and my husband was great. He, he tells me sometimes you should have had a wife. You know, he ironed my clothes for me. And this was this wasn't one day. This was his everyday duty was to iron my clothes in the mornings. If I was going to have breakfast before I left, he was going to prepare the breakfast. He's just that man. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> and right. And so um, this particular morning, he had ironed the clothes, got everything together for me, laid back down. And so as I'm leaving out, I look back at him. I just started going off. You don't support me. I have this business that Whoa. I'm supposed to do and you <laughs> won't do it. And he's looking at me like, what is wrong with you? He said, Jackie, you don't even have a business plan. And so he's starting to counter what I'm saying. You don't even have a business plan. All of a sudden, you're just popping up with these business ideas. You want to do this? And I said, I've never been an entrepreneur. What are you talking about? I don't want to do this. God is making me do it. <laughs> and so he goes, 
you don't even have a name. I don't. And I start ratting off all these things God has shared with me. And so when I came home that day, I said, I got something for you. So maybe two days, maybe not that same day, but a couple days later, I came home. I said, oh, I have something for you. We were sitting down talking. I got something for you. So I went up because I would keep all of my documents in my office at work. So I would take everything to work with me. I didn't want him to find it. You no. know? Wow. And so I took, so I came, I went out to the car. And I brought in this binder, and I said, here. And he looked, what is a biz? I said, here's my EIN, here's this, here's, this girl got a whole business. Like, he just could not believe it. And I said, I'm serious about this. And so at this point, I started telling him, and God told me, this person, this person, this person, I started naming the board of directors. God told me that all these people were going to be on my board of directors. And I said, and I need you to contact your friend. Um, I told him which friend, and I said, because he's supposed to assist in this area as well. And I said, I'm not sure if he's going to be a board of directors or what, but on the board, I said, but I need you to give me his information. And he wouldn't give it to me for whatever reason. I don't know. He just probably got distracted. Pastor Deborah. So I asked him again. He didn't give it to me. The next morning, I went to work. I was leaving my office, walked downstairs. Who was at the bottom of the stairs? His friend. See, look, you know what, Jackie? You, you, you really got a patient and a good husband. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but let me tell you, he didn't tell him. He was just there. God placed him there for me yeah. to get the information, I guess. You know, and so he and I talked about it. And initially, um, he told me, he said, Jackie, this needs to be a nonprofit, so make sure you do the 501c3. And that was a piece I needed for him. I didn't quite understand the difference. And so um, that's when I began to look into the nonprofit. And so I got me the little book, Nonprofit for Dummies, you know, and start studying up on that. And so um, at that point, okay, now I'm ready to go. Let me, let me ask you this, because we... Um, your process is wonderful because uh, many times we do go through all these, uh, I guess, all these hula hoops and all these mm -hmm. other things trying mm -hmm. to get to where God wants us to be when he has already established and determined what he wants to do. Yeah. But I want to talk about I want to talk about uh, the home that you have. I want to talk about uh, Grace for Hope. I love the name. Mm -hmm. And uh, Grace for Hope, is it just for girls or is it for boys and girls? It's or for boys and girls. It's for boys mm -hmm. and girls. And how do you, how do you, tell us uh, what it's for, what you actually do. So what we do um, at Grace for Hope, um, this particular home will be used exclusively for girls, but right now we're using it for girls and boys for a day program. And so the, our objective is to have the home licensed by the department. Um, of Children and Family Services to be a residential group home. Oh, okay. And so um, right now we're seeing youth um, throughout the day. They come to our day program and we work with them on different life skills and coping skills and just mentoring them and kind of pointing them in the right direction. And so um, in, in pursuing the group home, um, I was recommended, it was recommended by the department that I, well, by the lead agency, Eckert that I do a day program. Okay. And so, well, I become a mentor and I'm thinking, oh, okay, that sounds okay, but that's not what God said to me. You know, and, and I know at, at times when I would meet with them, they would probably think this is a cocky individual, but I wasn't. I was just confident in what God had, had shared with me and what God had called me to do. Um, more so um, one, I, I can remember having a conversation with um, someone from the lead agency, and she said, well, this is going to be an uphill battle. And I looked at her, and I said, well, it's fine, because I have strong calves, and this is what God has called me to do, and it'll get done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, um, so we've had lots of different obstacles in trying to get this thing off the ground. And so we had the neighbors, you know, calling the media on us, um, they were, she was concerned about what we were doing with all these kids coming in and out. And, um, it was almost like we were being accused of abusing the kids and um, trafficking the youth. And so we got... Uh, but, but you also assist with trafficking, and that's a part of what you do, isn't right, it? Right, working with those that have been trafficked. Oh, exactly. okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. okay. And so um, we kind of hit, you know, that 
obstacle. And, and then there was, um, well, not right now. We're not going to, um, we're pretty much at a standstill because the federal mandates were changing. But through all of this, well, actually before all of this, God is telling me, you got to move. This needs you full time. You cannot stay here. And so I can remember one day I was driving home and God is telling me, you got to go. He gave me the day. And I said, well, no, you don't even. And so then I start questioning him. Well, you don't know when, what am I going to do? And, and you're telling me to leave. What am I going to do? You want to be out? You want me to be out here all by myself? And I'm yelling at God. I'm in my truck yelling at God. You want me to be out here all by myself? I don't even have a friend that's on board. I mean, I'm going in. I'm giving God the business. And so he's patiently waiting on me to finish with my tantrum. And he said, you will leave when I say leave. And God told me, no, you don't have friends that you're hanging out with all the time because I have you in a box. I have a purpose for you. I have a vision for you. And if I allow all of those things, Jackie, you will get distracted. And those things will not come to pass on your watch. Okay, I didn't expect you to say all of that, but okay. It's, a, it's amazing to me how God will, um, when he has something for you to do, I, I'm, God doesn't easily release us from it because that's, that's the thing that's going to bring us the, the most joy yes. and the most fulfillment in our lives. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as you were going through your life processes, um, it wasn't that you couldn't climb the ladder. It wasn't that you couldn't right. make money. It wasn't that right. things didn't go well for you. It wasn't that you didn't have nice mm -hmm. things, but yet it was not hitting that spot yes. that, that God yes. had designed you to do. So now here you are after all of the fussing and the, yes. and all the things with your husband. And, I, yes. <laughs> and I'm convinced that um, you married the right person. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but through all of these things, God gets us to a place, uh, and it is his desire to get us to the place where we are fulfilled in what we're doing. And when you are fulfilled, then you have that, the I want to call it that, I won't quit yes. attitude, no matter exactly. what anybody says mm -hmm. to you, because I know this is the thing that God has called me to. This is the thing yes. that God desires for me to do, and I'm going to do it. And sometimes people uh, want to hear the end result yes. or get to the end without result the without the middle mm -hmm. of the, the questioning, because mm -hmm. that happens sometimes mm -hmm. without the, how can this be? Or in the whole idea, and I just want to point this out, is the fact that, and I'm, I'm very excited about you decided to let the job go yes. and, and work with these children because it is necessary. Because I know like there are people like myself who say, um, God, what can, what can I do? Uh, I'm not really called to do what you do. What can I do? And of course, you can always support what you do, right. uh, always. But uh, God wants us in places where we learn to totally lean on him. Yes. And that's the uncommonness yes. that God placed on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, and he's clear about what God is yes. saying. And he's mm -hmm. clear about the things that he's saying to us. And although sometimes they may seem a little, this is off the wall, as you said, this is all over the place. Mm -hmm. God is never all oh, over the place. Yes. And I yes. thank God that you made the decision mm -hmm. To, to to let it go and to do what he's telling you to do because you can hear the enthusiasm in your voice. And uh, we talked earlier concerning the children coming in and you teaching them how to eat and even how to cope with uh, what's happening yes. with them because mm -hmm. sometimes people try to cover that yes. up. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing, um, you share with me, is you're teaching them how to cope with what they've already been through yes. so that they can they can rise to another level and not use that as a crutch, as a or crutch an or an excuse mm -hmm. for not being able to excel in life. Yes. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Guys, again, this is called grace for hope. Yes. Grace for hope. Thank you so much. Because again, I think about kids mm -hmm. like that. I think about God, how can I help in? I feel so helpless sometimes yes. Yes. Uh, yes. concerning it. Not that I want to close my eyes to it, but it mm -hmm. just seems so overwhelming. It is very overwhelming. But Pastor Deborah, I always go back to um, when I feel like I want to help everybody and I could fix them all. I'm like, okay, God, you got me here, you got me there. And I go back to something you said. 
um, when you were teaching one time, God is not mismanaging my life. And I always remind myself he's not mis mismanaging this vision, what he's told, called me to do. And if I, there are moments when you see that you've touched someone or you see that, I see that I've touched this youth, it just satisfies me. It just, okay, God, I'm doing what you called me to do. Um, I was driving one night and I had a youth in a car with me and she's just bobbing and dancing to the music and she touched me on my shoulder and I looked at her and she goes, I love you so much, thank you. It was that moment I said, God, if I don't do anything else, I'm fulfilled. Amen, that is so good. I am so glad that you made a choice and a decision to accept my invitation to come to share uh, your journey yes. and uh, God speaking to you and um, prayerfully, it gives people hope yes. for things that God has called them to mm -hmm. do, uh, to not quit, not give up on it, and understand that there is something that God has you to do in life yes. that really satisfies you mm -hmm. and, um, and it will touch other people's lives. I just believe that anything that, that you do that satisfies you from God yes. will naturally touch other people's lives. And um, just tell us, how, how many do you have in your center at a time? Just um, some well, quick information. Well, we currently have two homes, and we usually we try to keep the, the ratio down, or we try to keep the amount of children down to at least to um, a max of five um, per home. So on any given day, we'll have 10. Um, today we have 10. But there are times when it's a little bit more. And so, but God has blessed me with amazing staff. There are seven of us. So um, there are times when we'll, it'll be two in one home, three in one home, depending on the acuity or the kids' um, level, you know, their level of trauma, what they've gone through, because that's going to determine how they present. And so um, we usually keep it at about five a day and five in each home. Oh, okay. So you keep it at a level that you actually can impact the children Absolutely. versus having a huge number right. that right. you can't really keep up with what's happening with exactly. them. Oh, exactly. Gosh. Because it's our goal to truly get to know the youth, truly get to know them. Mm -hmm. um, each and every one that comes through the door, each and every youth, I make it a point that I need to have conversation with you. I need to spend time with you. I need to know who are you. So that way I'm able to speak on this youth. You know, I'm able to um, support them in a way that, no, they shouldn't be in this environment when I'm communicating with their case manager. You know, this is what I see or this is what I found mm -hmm. um, with the child. And so, um, and the staff, they know too that we are, we are enmeshed in this. You know, you need to get to know that the youth and when I tell you God has blessed me with the right people, um, they are just totally committed to, to our youth. And the children see it. They love it. You know, they love that attention. Well, thank you again, um, because you never know, again, the number of lives uh, that these children, when they grow up, they will touch as a result of being made whole. That's the way I see it, being made whole in Christ Jesus and moving on with their lives. Well, thank you so, so thank very you. much again. Thank you. thank you. And again, thank everyone for joining us here on Let's Talk It Out. I'm sure you gained something from uh, Miss Jackie B. I'm sure if nothing else, you'll be encouraged to pursue those things that God has put into your heart and understand uh, the journey is not always smooth. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not always smooth, but God has something on the inside of us. And I keep saying, and it's called the Holy Spirit that is uncommon, it's not like the world, and it will cause you to uh, carry out those things and give you the strength and the energy necessary for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And everyone, again, love you so much. Hope you enjoyed this segment, and we'll see you later at the Uncommon Conference. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm sure we have a uh, an announcement for that again. We're looking for you to keep registering. We look to see you there. Oh, gotta get all this together because of the conference. Uncommon, uncommon. Yeah, yep. Gotta make sure I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Gotta set my mind, gotta set my face. I'm going. Game time.
Ladies, I am so excited about our Uncommon Conference. This is going to be so awesome. I'm looking forward to it. As a matter of fact, because it's virtual, you get to talk How about that in the sanctuary. You get to chat it up. We want you to be involved. We want you to, listen, I want you to get dressed for the conference. I want you to be prepared for the conference. I don't want you to just be, oh my goodness, I just ate a sandwich. Let me just kind of slide in. No, 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 no. I need you to get dressed. Put your makeup on. Get your game face on. Because we're about to have an awesome, awesome time. You know, although we may not be together, understand this. I'm just like Paul. He said, I may not be with you right now, but I can feel you in the spirit. I feel your spirit. I feel you pulling and drawing on God. I promise you, this is going to be an uncommon situation. Are we lying? I feel you in the spirit, girl. Chat it up. Chat it up. And share. Share. I got all that. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you register. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the chat.